Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Around the Diocese from the St. Oscar Romero Studio and the Catholic Pastoral Center of the Diocese of Nashville. My name is Ron Flights. I'm delighted to be with you today. And with us, we have two guests today. We have John Bozio, who is author of the book Raising a Catholic Family Today, Building a Domestic Church, and Daniel Shackle with the Knights of Columbus Insurance Agent, the Shackle Agency, I should say, and they sell a lot of neat, great insurance and, and all kinds of things, which Daniel will share with you here as we go along, too. Hello and welcome. Thank you very much. We got a lot to talk about today, so before we do that, let's bring the Holy Spirit in on this program. In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be within our program today as we learn all about the new book that John's written and how the Knights of Columbus are supporting it. We're grateful for our listeners, Lord. We ask that you guide us to share information that will be easy to understand and educate those who may not be aware of these organizations. We thank you, Lord, and praise you for your glory. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, Natural Catholic Radio is about to embark on a six-part series here during Lent um, on John's new book, Raising a Catholic Family, today. So, John, why don't you share with us what brought you to writing this book? It's it's an excellent book. I told you before, it's like a four or five hour read for me, and and I just flew through it. But what what made you want to, you know, do do this book? Well, as you know, Ryan, I have written other books on marriage, mostly mm -hmm. been on marriage. Right. And uh, that's been the past 10 years, 15 years. And, and, you know, there's what brought me to this was it was not intended. I was mm -hmm. applying for another write a book. I was invited to give a talk. And in preparing for the talk, I discovered that there is this whole area of family life that I had not paid attention to, mm -hmm. which is you know, the evangelization of the family and what's happening to families today. So anyway, what prompted me ultimately to put it together as a book were two things. One is the realization of what's happening to the family today. And secondly, to realize that the Knights of Columbus are actually focusing their attention on evangelizing the family. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, those two could come together and, you know, take this document, this book, and make something out of it that's going to help as many families as possible. What a great project you started on, and and you've Lord knows you've spent enough time on this. I mean, it's well because it's more than the book; it's also the audio, right? Five class and all the interviews you did interviews. in order to make this thing happen. Now you have some statistics you can share that uh, it's yeah. stipulated uh, a lot of this book as well. Absolutely, absolutely. One of the things that I realize is happening today is that. We are all kind of nomads. We, we tend to relocate. We do for a full change of opportunities, which are great opportunities. I myself have relocated six, six times. And, you know, that is very stress, stressful to a family. Uh, one of the things that happens to a family when we relocate is that we, we, we become isolated. You know, we lose, the, we lose our roots to contact with our roots. We don't have the daily contact with our parents, grandparents, and uncles who can reinforce for us the the traditions of the family, the religious traditions. And they cannot they do not hold us accountable anymore. Ours, you know, nobody to say, hey, why didn't you go to mass last Sunday? Or right. why didn't aren't your kids in Catholic schools or religious education? Now it's up to us. So we become isolated. It's up to us to carry on our faith and we drift. Mm -hmm. And that is what's happening. The statistics show that, you know, today uh, you know, our young people are, are drifting. Um, there's a particular number of people, a particular generation, the young families today, which are the millennial generation, uh -huh. which were those born uh, between 1981 and 1996. Uh, the statistics I have is from uh, from the people related, associated with Words on Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, they indicate that 7% of millennials who were raised Catholic are no longer practicing. This was done in 2016. By 2016, only 7% were practicing Catholic, practicing in the sense that it's more than just going to church on Sunday. Okay. Okay. You pray at home, you follow the Catholic traditions and the, the teachings. Of That's the scary. Yeah, only 7%. So we basically have lost a generation. Mm -hmm. And what's sad about it is that 
not only the people do not practice, but it's affecting their mental health. You know, the, the suicide rate among uh, millennials, suicide rate and, and overdose uh, deaths, right, uh, is for millennials is higher than for other generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's another study that I kind of a contrast with this comes from uh, a university that shows that those who grew up in families where faith is practiced uh, are happier and have, have stronger marriages. Mm -hmm. So faith keeps people on track, gives us a, a point, gives us a point of reference, guides us, gives us hopes, and keeps us going. So the, the hope of the book and the program is to remind people to think about their own radio, religious traditions and see if they are in track. You know, am I? Am I? Do where am I with my faith? And what am I doing for my children? That's right. really. We don't want to lose the next generation, because I think another statistics I have is that uh, the the young people are falling out, and the church is losing young people. I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but we are losing young people. And unfortunately, that's obvious in a lot of churches when you go to visit them. Absolutely. Now you hope that they come back, but the point is, we we need to provide that time when they are at home as young children to form them and give them a foundation that they will keep uh, you know, for themselves. You know, one of the things that we talk about in one of the podcasts is that what's happening in the family in the early years, uh, spiritually, we're forming their spiritual DNA. You know? And they will, they will carry that for the rest of their life, even if they leave the church. Right. They will carry it. And we need, it's important we don't neglect to do that kind of work as parents when the children are young. And that's what we emphasize during the podcast and in the cool book. You've done a lot of research into that. And uh, in addition to that, it's not just a radio program with you talking about the book, uh, which, as I mentioned before, is a very interesting book. But you also do a lot of interviewing through the whole series. Right. I interviewed 12 couples, 12 families uh, from seven different parishes here in Nashville or the surrounding area. And they shared a lot. I, I had about 26 questions I was asking them. And they very willingly shared their own life with us. And so you will hear all of that in the, in the podcast, which really supplement what the book is about. It's real life. This is real life. People telling about their stories, their, their struggles, how they, how they find hope in, in the election, in faith, and how they pass this on to their children. So a lot of good suggestions comes from what they are doing. And uh, I'm glad and very grateful to those couples who are willing to talk. Yeah, and they shared a lot. Uh, I was very interested in, in, in listening. Of course, John and I had the opportunity to listen to a lot of these as we were doing the program, because obviously it's all pre-recorded. But the, uh, I, I mean, some of those answers that people gave, it was very, very impressive to me. You know, and, and, you, and simply, you really look forward to hearing Right, in a sense, I wish I had had those when I was writing the book, <laughs> because some of those are wonderful things that complement what the book is about. You know, it's nice to be able to to read the book and to share and listen to everything that's that they're going to talk about. But in addition to that, one of the more important things, too, is thanks to the Knights of Columbus Insurance, the Shackle Agency, uh, the first 500 people who respond to this will have an opportunity to get a free book and then follow along. And... Daniel, I, you, it really fits in with what the Knights of Columbus is looking to do this year. It does, and uh, I love what you said about the habits and things like that. Uh, I think our habits and our choices make our character, and Father McGivney in the late 1800s was facing violent anti-Catholicism, anti-Catholicism anti from some Protestant denominations, and it was causing men to leave the faith. You know, leave the faith to find protection, leave the faith to find work or benefits for their family. Uh, and Father McGivney knew when a man left the faith, his family was probably right on his heels out the door, right? Mm -hmm. So he knew that if these families were going to keep their faith, to John's point, with the moving around, most of these families were immigrant families. They left their family back in Ireland or Italy or wherever, they, they came to this new place and didn't have a family here to keep those traditions going. So Father McGivney wanted us to have a brotherhood that would support each other in faith, 
and protect each other financially. And I always tell people that really you could boil down the reason the Knights of Columbus was started to two things, which is one, keep Catholic families Catholic, mm -hmm. and number two, the financial protection. And nowadays, I mean, we really don't have the Protestants coming after us. No, that's true. But it's a different world. We do have this postmodern, secular, humanist religion. And I do call it a religion because they are evangelical about how they come after our families, our children. And, uh, you know, the 1880s, just like today, the Catholics who are trying to stay Catholic were swimming against the current to keep their faith. Mm -hmm. And then we had this period that they earned for us that was, we were swimming with the current, right? Right, right. Now all of that's flipped again, and I think it caught a lot of us by surprise. I know it caught me by surprise. Mm -hmm. And if I knew it was happening earlier on, we probably would have done some things differently with my older children. But, you know, the the American Worldview Institute did a report in 2021 that said 88% of American adults hold to secretism, meaning they hold a mixture of worldviews yeah. as opposed to a single worldview. And that's what our children are hearing. Even when we're not in the room, even if it's not from their teachers, they're hearing it online. And there's only one way, one truth, and one life, and that's Jesus Christ. He's in our tabernacles, in our in our churches. And uh, I think the Knights of Columbus realizes it's time for Catholic men to awake from their slumber yeah. and join the battle on our original first two missions, which is keeping Catholic families Catholic and combating the confusion that's taken down our families. And, John, your book just, just fits in here and molds so well with what the Knights of Columbus you know, is, is projecting to do this year to bring the families more together, to bring knights even closer together. Because, you know, I've, I've just noticed in our own council how, how much more we're working together, you know, this year. Because, because really, faith is, faith's always been there, but it's, it's now, it's the brotherhood is bringing it a lot closer too. And that's fantastic. And your book uh, is good for everybody. But I mean, you know, when when you're able to to uh, get in with these couples and share all that information that they pour out, is there anything you could share about one or two of the couple comments that 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 might be exciting to hear? Well, that's uh, you know asking me a very about the question. You know, I'm sorry, not the, <laughs> Well, I think some of the things surprise me. Uh, you know, in terms of their ability to share, mm -hmm. you know, talking about, for example, how they resolve their conflicts. You know. Uh, because I, I, well, the question I was asking was, you know, how do you make up after a fall? Yeah. After you fight, you know, we all, we all have disagreements in marriage. It's impossible to avoid conflicts in marriage. But then how do you, because children need to learn to make up. Mm -hmm. And and so basically they shared, you know, but by the bottom line, we, we, we have to listen to each other. Yeah, and that that was really the lesson I I heard from them very clearly. We have to listen to each other, to be humble enough to admit that I don't have the answer, and I need to hear yours before I make a judgment, before I accuse you, before I attack you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and so, but many of them said, you know, we don't want to hide our fights as long as they see us reconciled. I think that right. your book says that a lot. And it relates to the fact that we need to provide children, and that's in chapter one, a safe home, a mm -hmm. home where they don't, they don't feel anxiety, where they can feel comfortable and they feel there is stability. And whenever there's conflict in a marriage, the stability is threatened. So even though conflicts will happen, they need to see the stability remains after the conflict. So that is one thing that they made very clear. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm so grateful for them to share as well as, you know, sometimes you have to go to a council because we cannot do it on our own. And they admit it. Uh, so you will hear a lot of beautiful stories about, you know, how we make up. Not only, but it's, it's not so much about techniques. Uh, it's more about the intent, you know, the habits we want to create in our home, you know, uh, regular meals, you know, right. regular family meals. And... How do we ma how do we manage the all of these uh, uh, media outlets or with all the different viewpoints and everything else with the 
phones and the iPads and tablets and computers. How do we control all of that so that our children are not hurt? Uh, a lot of that information is, is very valuable, and they're very honestly sharing it with what, how they do it. You know, some people say, one, one couple said, uh, we have forbidden in our family social media. Our children are not allowed to have social media. Somebody said, there's no reason for our children to have a cell phone mm -hmm. unless they are ready to go to work. You know, if it is their first job and they need to be away from home, then they can have a cell phone. Otherwise, there is no need for them to have a cell phone. So really practical advice mm -hmm. that it can be helpful to many people. In case you're just joining us, uh, you've been listening to uh, Around the Diocese. Our guest today is John Bozio, author of the book, Raising a Catholic Family Today, Building a Domestic Church, and Daniel Shackle, uh, General Agent of the Shackle Agency of the Knights of Columbus Insurance. And I went a little bit beyond halfway, just so you guys know. Uh, so the, uh, th this book that John has written, uh, what we're intending to do is, as you've heard us share a little bit, but it's, it's easy to, to get a hold of this book. And uh, I can tell you this, having read the book before we started really uh, doing the program itself, uh, you want to have the book in your hands by all means to follow through with it. Because when you hear what the couples say on there, you can go right to that, that, that section and say, yeah, yeah, okay, I remember reading about this. It, it, it really brings the book to life. And well, the thing that the program, book and the podcast together are trying to accomplish is just to invite the individual listening, reading, to think about how they received the faith, how it was passed on them, and then to go turn around and say, how am I doing it with my kids? Right. Am I providing something that is solid that will help them in life? by guiding them on, on the faith, on, on the practices. So that that is really the process. The rest is stories, anecdotes, uh, ways to remind yourself of how things went in your life. It's a reflective process. And it made me think. It really made me think a lot about going back when my kids were, were teenagers and such, which is a long time ago. But the... Uh, so many things just just caught on with me, and that's as I shared with John before. I bought uh, four copies, one for each each of our our our, our uh, family members, and wrote a little note with each of them. You know, take this and you know and, and apply it. it. It's some great stuff. So much for the book at this particular point in time, Daniel. I want you to share a little bit more about the insurance side of Knights of Columbus as the Knights of Columbus business model, because. Uh, a lot of people don't realize what all of the KFC insurance offers. Well, I mentioned Father McGivney a while ago in the 1880s and the immigrant families. And his family was one of those. His father came here from Ireland as well as his mother. And uh, while Father McGivney was in the seminary, his father died, leaving himself and 12 other children without a provider. Mm -hmm. And during those days, and there were no social safety nets, none of that stuff. If dad died, mom went on the street, kids went to the orphanage probably adopted by Protestant families, losing the faith in their family forever. So along with keeping Catholic families Catholic through the Knights of Columbus fraternity, he wanted to keep them Catholic through financial protection for each other. Now, he was actually going to the courthouse and uh, finding financial backers to, to go and say, I'll take care of this family, don't break them up. Mm -hmm. And he had done this with several families in fact, the anniversary of the, uh, the first meeting in the name of the Knights of Columbus was last week, February 6th. Yeah. And he actually came from one of those court hearings and met with the nine guys at St. Mary's, and they formed this association to take care of each other. And since then, we've turned into the largest Catholic fraternal organization in the world. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we're a financial powerhouse in the Catholic community as well. You probably see us sponsoring a lot of Catholic events, Marginal Over Life, Eucharistic Congresses, uh, defending religious liberty, paying for the defense of religious liberty. You know, we were founded for those times in 1882, and it's very possible that we were founded because we needed to be here today as well to pick up the mantle in the same type of situation. So our financial arm really has grown into something that defends the church as well. We have about $126 billion of life insurance in force on our members. We have about a million certificates or contracts 
for our members. Uh, right here in my agency, we manage about $2 billion in life insurance in Tennessee and Kentucky and, and Eastern Arkansas. So that's a lot of Catholic families. We have about 30,000 certificates in force that, that we uh, were proud to be offering Catholic families to take care of them. And then we also invest all of the insurance company money and have since our very beginning in a way that meets the USCCB's ethical investing guideline so that Catholics can know that their money isn't supporting Planned Parenthood or these other things. I really think it's the, one of the best kept secrets in the Catholic Church that we have this organization where you can do these things for your family that you need to do anyway, right? but do it in a way that's not supporting the secular culture that's attacking our faith, right? Exactly. And uh, the building isn't lit up in all of the latest fads of social whatever color. Right. We expanded that as well because we also saw a need beyond that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is becoming a, a bigger and bigger thing, the socially conscious investing. So a few years ago, we launched something called uh, Knights of Columbus Asset Advisors. Uh -huh. So these same people that manage Thirty billion or so dollars of money for the insurance company have set up and managed these mutual funds. You can actually have the the managers of the Knights of Columbus money managing your money. Yeah. In Connecticut, so all of these all of these mutual funds again are screened with the same guidelines to make sure that you're um, not supporting anything contrary to the faith. And there are some other companies out there that do that kind of thing, but I think what really separates us is that we have. Um, agents on the ground, advisors, mm -hmm. advisor representatives on the ground in your community that you can work with in a Catholic way and really move towards helping Catholic families with holistic financial planning. It's a it's a great organization. I've had insurance uh, for, gosh, I guess probably since we moved here, what, 23 years ago? So, yeah, it, I can certainly attest to that. It's it, it's a great program. Um, real quick. Because we only got a couple minutes left, uh, tell how how a gentleman could become a Knight of Columbus. So I know that there's a lot of you out there listening that aren't knights yet, yeah. And I would challenge you to join us, because look, we do have great hope through all of this. We're learning what's happening in our families. John's helping us. Mm -hmm. The Knights of Columbus is stepping up to this, trying to help as well. But we need you to help us, and there's great hope if we all come together. So we would encourage you to join. You can. Of course, contact the council at your local parish. If you don't have one there, your your parish priest might know or there's one nearby. Or you can go to kfc.org slash join us. Mm -hmm. And if you fill out that form there and send it in, you'll become an at-large member of the Knights of Columbus. And the local council will get an email saying you want to join so they can contact you. And right now, if you do that and you use the shackle, D-S-C-H-A-C-H-L-E, as the promo code or the uh, agent referral code, you can have your first year of membership for free. Wow, that's Just great. Make sure you put that in, D-S-C-H-A-C-H-L-E, and hit apply code. That should zero out your balance for you to try it out for you. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks for sharing that, Daniel. Now, before we go here, John, um, I want to share the the six different titles for, yeah. for the program I do. Oh, from the book. Indeed. The first chapter is Our Home is a Sanctuary. The second one, our home is a place where love resides. The third one, our home is a school of prayer. The fourth one, our home is an apprenticeship to loving. Number five, our home is where we learn to live in God's time. And number six, our home is a training camp for discipleship. We do have a lot of resources for couples and for families, so yeah. that's happy together and God that. Well, we have been through a lot of stuff here, gentlemen, and I know we didn't follow in any way, shape, or form what we we're going to talk about. You know, the Holy Spirit takes over this program, which is a beautiful thing, but I, I can't begin to tell you how much I enjoyed having both of you gentlemen on here. Uh, the program, Daniel Shackle of Knights of Columbus Insurance, the Shackle Agency, and we thank you, of course, for your support of, of the book. And then John Bozio, the author of the book, Raising a Catholic Family Today. Thank you for having us. Honored, honored to do it wrong. Thank you. Well, delighted to have you both. Around the Diocese is locally produced and made possible through the generous donations of the Cook Foundation, our listeners, sponsors, and the Diocese of Nashville. Broadcast worldwide via the Nashville Catholic Radio app, 
streaming at nashvillecr.com and locally available at 100.5 FM. We're shining the light of our Catholic faith from Nashville Catholic Radio. Until we meet again, my sincere thanks for all of you for listening. God bless you and have a great faith journey.